another video on the Cub Challenger 500. Uh, this one will be a little more informative as to what the machine really is about. So I guess we'll just jump right in and uh, the video may suck because obviously I'm trying to run the camera and uh, use my other hand to do stuff. So anyway, this is 2015 Cub Cadet Challenger 500. Um, this is exactly the way it comes from the factory, minus the door nets. I took them off. It's got the side view mirrors, which distort the, um, the vision behind you, you know, of, the, of what you're seeing. It's got turn signals, high beams, low beams, four-way flashers, a horn, parking lights, brake lights, it's got a parking brake that actually works pretty well. Um, it's got a digital display. It shows your speed, the time of day, the RPMs, two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, diff lock, fuel gauge, um, temperature, four ways on, your turn signal, flashers, also has a cool beep. Let you know your parking brakes on. Let you know your seat belts are on or not. Um, it's got a 12 volt power supply, and the buttons here are for two wheel drive, four wheel drive. You push that in. You're in four. Click it over here. Then you can lock your differential. Surprisingly enough, it gets around pretty good in two wheel drive, but I'm sure that's because of the tires on this. Um, the seats are actually fairly comfortable. It does have a headrest. It is padded. It's not a solid piece of plastic. One thing I did like about this is if you're going to store it or trailer it, the, um, the roll bar comes apart. So you can take the front and back sections off and your height would be reduced to your steering wheel. So you could fit it in a, a shallow trailer. Um, the windshield is two-piece and it's held on with these velcro keepers so you can have it on and off pretty quick I've already had it on and off a few times um, it does have a grab bar up here when your girlfriend is freaking out because you're doing crazy things um, of course the seat belts the shifter mine was so far out of adjustment when I bought it that you couldn't get it into lower reverse without it popping out of gear um, once I adjusted it, that works fine. You've got a box here, which is probably where the stereo is going to go. You've got cup holders. It's almost set up like a car console. And you've got this little storage compartment up here. And you've got this with a lid on it. You can keep other items in. There is a spot down here where it looks like speakers could go. And that's where they will go. And this connection here is for your winch cable. I have no clue what that bracket hanging down there is for. The doors actually had these rubber pieces on them that connected to the body. So when you open the door, it wants to slam closed. And that's a pain in the neck, so they were undone pretty quickly. Um, yeah, the tires that it comes with actually have a boatload of meat on them. That's probably why it does so good in two-wheel drive. And it's got nice rims, and, you know, overall the machine doesn't look bad. And you had storage because I just finished using it. On both sides, it's got the uh, manual release to tilt the bed. It is loaded with struts like your hood and trunk would be in your car. And I actually did have a couple loads of logs in here, pretty full, and it, uh, it was no problem dumping them out. Springs, they are adjustable, and mine came with a tool to adjust them, although in the owner's manual it says that you would need to get that separately. It actually has uh, rear sway bars, which is pretty cool. And... Uh, this is where your parking brake is actuated. If you can see the uh, the disc in the caliper there, 
so that's probably why it locks it up so well because it locks the rear differential. It's got four wheel independent link suspension. Um, the axles are CV boots, not U joints. Fuel fill is on this side. And I know my last video I said you had to take off that console to check the oil. Well, after dinking with this a little bit, that's not true. You can actually pull the seat off, which is just this lever here, and the seat will come out. And you can get to the oil dipstick through there. And I'll put that seat back in later because I'm going to need two hands. The hood is held shut with these bungee cord type things. They hook to the hood and then back here. So you pull both of those off and lift it from the middle. It's extremely thin and flimsy. I don't think it'd take much to, to damage it. Underneath here you have your battery. Um, it's inside of this box. It's got an engine oil cooler. So if you change your oil, you're going to have whatever amount this holds unless you drain it. And you could drain it if you want. Take take that um, hose off at the bottom. I don't know if you can see it, the shadow and let it drain. Um, your coolant reservoir is down here. It's fairly easy to get to if you put the antifreeze in something other than the gallon jug first. The radiator, which is all aluminum. That I like. Um, the cap, same thing, adjustable springs, front sway bar, CV joints as opposed to U joints at the axle ends, your headlight capsule, your parking light, that type of thing. It's got dual horns, one here, one there. Everything seems to be wire tied, I guess, to keep the connectors from accidentally popping open. But um, some of your modules are out here, some are underneath the, uh, the console. And I honestly haven't looked to see where the fuse panel is. This just might be a junction block. So I don't see any fuses there. So unfortunately, I can't tell you where the fuse panel is at this moment master cylinder for the brakes it's got some plastic shields I'm guessing so you uh, don't get things wedged up in there it works over here. now mine of course has the, the plow mount on it um, it comes from the factory with a winch and this cool little red thing so you know that you have a winch I guess um, I guess really that's about all I'm gonna get into on this video however I do want to tell you that I've had this a little while now and I've done some research on it and as I kind of expected and it turns out that this is the same exact machine that tractor supply sells under the name of Masumo, I believe is how you pronounce it, M-A-S-S-I-M-O. They call it the MSU 500. And at Tractor Supply, this machine costs $7,999.99. From the Cub dealer, they cost $8,500. Um, it is also the same exact machine as High Sun. It's the High Sun 500 Classic. H-I-S-U-N. For whatever reason, I've seen that listed online in a couple of places for $12,000 for this machine. Um, so if you're thinking of one of these, you might want to do a little research and get what works best for you. Oh yeah, these, I think I covered them in the last video. The latches for the tailgate. This was bent out when I got the machine. And yeah, I love rust. Look at that, it's starting already. So it's my understanding these things get tweaked easy and you're constantly adjusting them so that you can open them without any problems. This one seems to be okay yet. Yeah. 
and I guess the big glove box is a plus. And it does come with the remote winch control from the factory. So, other than that, just uh, keep in mind, this is a machine that's got a couple of different badges on it. So, if you don't care about that, then shop around, because right now Tractor Supply seems to be the best price as far as getting one. Um, it's definitely underpowered. Not terribly bad, but it is underpowered. I'm not quite at the break-in hours yet, but I have had it up to uh, 40 miles an hour. And it seemed pretty stable, and it stops pretty well. So, honestly, I don't have a lot of complaints with it, as long as, you know... The criticals hold up, the engine tranny, differentials, axles, bearings, that type of stuff. So I hope this video helped you out, and uh, good luck.